Hi, I'm Mike Seymour from fxguide.com for Wired, looking at the character visual effects in the final episodes of HBO's Game of Thrones. In the end of series four, fans of the show were rewarded with some really impressive fights, such as the major battle at the wall between the Free Folk, north of the wall, and the men of Night's Watch. It was an excellent chance to see also the range of character work done by the visual effects teams. If you recall, we actually looked before at the visual effects of Game of Thrones, the dragon characters. Of course, in series four, the dragons are bigger, so gone are those stuffed toy reference stand-ins of previous series. Now Amelia Clark is filmed reacting to full-size molded plastic heads on sticks, which Pixo Mondo then replaced with the detailed CG dragons. Also advanced from earlier seasons are the implementations of the Whites, the reanimated undead of the White Walkers. As Bran Stark and his companions reach the cave of the Three-Eyed Ravens, they are attacked by a group of Whites that emerge from the snow-covered ground. Mira fights them off by actually fighting a healthy stuntman in a green suit. For the shoot, which lasted four or five days in the brutal weather outside Belfast, the production actually asked for the thinnest stuntman that casting could find. They then matched CG characters over the top of the motion of these filmed green screen stuntmen. The whites couldn't actually be matched perfectly to these stuntmen, not only because of their skeletal form, but also because the team at Scanline VFX wanted a sense of rigor mortis, uh, a stiffness added in, because those whites had actually been uh, dead and buried in the snow for some time. But the series also saw some new characters, such as at the wall, the massive 700 foot high wall that stretches from Forest Frank Mountains in the west to the Bay of Seals in the east. The wall is attacked by the Free Folk or the Wildlings Army, now complete with giants and woolly mammoths. These shots required some creative thinking. The team at MPC had to animate completely those mammoth walk cycles before anything else so that the team could then program the motion bases that the giants sat on to move correctly, allowing the actors playing the giants to be composited back on the walking CG mammoths and still move and sway correctly. Now, this was made even more complicated by the fact that the giants had to be shot with a special scaled motion control green screen system. This would allow the giants to be scaled up relative to the normal actors who are playing the wildlings of the north that are moving next to them. And they all had to move correctly in perspective throughout the shot. If you scale an element, then you have to reduce all of its angles and tilts to compensate. MPC, who produced all the attack shots and used their fertility tool for the mammoth fur, also produced the massive scythe shot, which dispatches the climbing wildlings on the wall. Here the characters are actually live action and the environment and all the effects are added as CG, showing that sometimes the best solution to character work is to actually use real actors whenever possible and then just add and craft the final shots by adding in complex CG and effect simulation animation. Well, don't forget, subscribe for more behind the scenes action. I'm Mike Seymour for Wired. Thank <laughs> you.